Section 7. We're using exponent rules and operations to simplify rational exponent expressions. So let's step back a few days and refresh what we've been doing with rational expressions. 7x to the 1 half. Remember, 1 half means the square root. So that's the square root of x. Remember, there's where the 1 half comes from. The 7 is on the outside. It's 7 times x to the 1 half. This really could be rewritten like this. Or the x to the 1 half could be in front of Or there could be a dot in between it. We just don't usually put that because it's understood that when two things are put together in algebra, it means multiplication. But notice that the 7 is not inside. For it to be inside, it would have to be like this. That is telling us the entire 7x is being raised to the 1 half, and therefore it's the square root of 7x. 14 to the 2 thirds, 14 goes underneath, and 2 thirds. Remember, this can also be written this way. Okay, go in the opposite direction. Notice 8y, the entire 8y is being square rooted. So it's the entire 8y in parentheses raised to the 1 half. This is 6 to the 5 thirds. Remember, the index number is our denominator. And here, this is y to the 3 fourths. We can look right here to the two different ways that can be rewritten why we did that. Okay, if you look back to 2.3, we kind of did a quick review of this. The rule is a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n. So since this is a 1 here, this is x to the 4. You may remember the edge, keep the base, and add the exponents. Power of a product. Okay, that's when you take a to the m and raise it to another power. Well, in that case, we multiply the exponents. So this would be equal to x to the 10, 5 times 2. Power of the product. If a, b is in parentheses and it's raised to the m, this m goes to each of those. And if you think about the previous rule, this is really a 1 in here and a 1, so you're going to multiply and get a to the m times a to the m. It distributes basically. So this 3 is going to go here, here, and here. So it's going to be 2 to the third, x to the third, y to the third, which would be further 8x cubed, y cubed. And think about it. If these x and y's had a different exponent, like 1 or like 2 or 3, it would be 3 times 2, 3 times 3, and so forth, based on the previous rule that you multiply the exponent. Okay, negative exponent. A to the negative 1 is the same as 1 over A. So this would be 1 over x cubed. So I alluded to this in 2.3. If you're babysitting kids and you're upstairs and they're being really negative and crabby and whiny, you send them downstairs to get a better attitude or to get positive. And if you're downstairs and they're being that way, you send them upstairs to their room to get positive. Zero exponent rule. Anything to the zero power is one. Quotient. A to the m over a to the n is a to the m minus n. So in this case, this would be x to the 4 minus 2, or just x squared. But instead of getting worried about minuses, especially, you know, 
with some numbers sometimes. I just ask myself, where do I have more X's, top or bottom? And you would say top. And therefore, that's where the leftovers are. And how many more do I have? I have two more. So if I had something like this, x to the third and x to the seventh, the reason I don't really worry about the subtraction rule is because now I end up with a negative exponent. I get negative four. And then I just have to use the previous rule and move it back. So why not just skip that step and say, where do I have more on the bottom? How many more? Four more. And I have one as a placeholder. Because remember, the long way, the official way would be to do three minus seven which would give me x to the negative 4, which I'd have to change to that anyway. It doesn't matter which way you go about it. You can take the long road or the short road. It's whatever your brain processes. But I just want you to see how that works. Power of quotient, well, that's when you have something, a fraction, being raised to an exponent. Well, basically, again, it's just going to distribute. So I get a to the m over b to the m. So in this case, I get 2 cubed over x cubed. Now I'll simplify that to 8 over x cubed. And you can distribute the exponent as long as there is no plus or minus in the parentheses. So in other words, if I had x plus 5 squared, I cannot not, 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 just do this. That's not right. That is wrong. That's why I put the big old no, don't do this. But I want you to understand what I'm talking about, what you cannot do. It doesn't work like that. You can't just distribute that way. Okay. So, here we go. Some examples. Ask the one half to the two-thirds would be one-half times two-thirds. Now, the long way to go about it is x, one times two is two, two times three is six, and then reduce it. One-third. x to the one-third. Otherwise, you could say, hey, those twos cancel and go directly to this answer, one-third. But it's up to you. But you do multiply those two. Here, the 2 is going to get multiplied sent here and here. So that's 3 squared over y to the 3 times 2 is 6 and 4. And then I want to reduce that and say, and simplify the top, 9 over y to the 3 halves. But again, you could, when you're multiplying the 2 times the 3 fourths, you could think about the 2 and the 4 canceling, and there's your 3 halves. And here, again, keep the base and the exponents. Make sure you have the same denominators that we do. So that's going to be 2 thirds plus 1 third, which is 3 thirds, which is just basically m to the 1 or just m. Okay, more of our rules. So, negative 2, negative 2 to the third into the ninth. We have the same base, so what do we do? Add the exponent. Negative 2 to the ninth plus 3 is 12. Here, we're going to distribute the 2, r squared over s to the negative 10. And remember, upstairs, downstairs, move it up, r squared, s to the positive 10. They were downstairs being loud and obnoxious, negative attitude. We send them upstairs to be positive. Okay, here we have negative y. 5 times 2 is 10. We don't move it downstairs. This negative means does not mean that. It's only negative exponents. And then we have a y to the 2. And then the y to the negative 12 is going to get moved downstairs. Now, what do we do with these two? Same base, add the exponent. That gives us negative y to the 12 over positive y to the 12. Now, be careful with this one because remember, we subtract the exponent, right? 12 minus 12, we get 0. And anything with 0 exponent is 1. But remember, we 
we have this negative up here, so it's negative 1. Anything divided by itself is 1, but we have a negative divided by itself, so it's negative 1. Okay, here, two ways to look at this. 7, 6, and 4, 6. Where do I have more? Up top. How many more? Well, 3, 6. So if you do the shortcut, you can just say 7 and 3, 6, which is, well, 1 half. But technically, if you do it the other way, it's the same thing, basically. You're saying 7 to the 7, 6 minus 4, 6, which is your 3, 6, and then reduce to 1 half. So you always want to reduce, set on the first page, always reduce your fraction. Okay, that right there is just 1. Plot anything to 0 is 1. And multiplying anything by 1 is itself. So here we have the same base of 5. So keep the base, add the exponents. But the problem is we have 3 fourths and 2 thirds. So we have to come over here off to the side and add these two. Well, we need a common denominator of 12. 4 times 3 is 12, so that's 9. 3 times 4, so that's 8. And that gives us 5 to the 17 twelfths. Okay, once again, here 9, we need to subtract 1 third minus 1 fourth. Because we're going to keep the base and add the, uh, subtract the exponents. But we need to find a common denominator. So that's going to be 12 again. 4 and 3. Four, 3 times 4. 4 times 3. 4 twelfths minus 3 twelfths is 1 twelfth. Number 10. Everything's going to be taken to the 1 half power, our square root. So 25 to the 1 half power, which again is the square root, so that's 5. x, 8 times 1 half is 4. And 16 times 1 half is 8. This negative 2 is going to be sent into everything. So 3 to the negative 2. And be careful, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. On the bottom, m to the negative 2 and to the negative 10. Now we got to clean it up. There's a lot of stuff going on here. But if you want, you can move your negatives first. So upstairs, downstairs, 3 squared is 9. So 3 to the negative 2 is 9, which is on the bottom. M to the 6 is going to go downstairs. The M to the 2, negative 2, is going to go upstairs. N to the 4 will stay. And the N to the negative 10 will move upstairs. Now, I need to simplify my letters. The 9 is going to stay on the bottom. Look at my M's. I have 2 on the top, 6 on the bottom. Where do I have more? On the bottom. How many more? 4 more. Again, if I did the subtraction rule, I'd do 2 minus 6, which is negative 4, on the top, then I'd move downstairs anyway. N, keep the base, add the exponents. And there's my answer. Okay, a lot going on number 12. First off, B and 0 is 1. I'm going to look at my, first my numbers. 27 divided by 9 is 3. 3 is going to go on the top. My A's. I have negative 5 thirds on the top and 2 thirds on the bottom. Well, I can go off the side and say negative 5 thirds minus 2 thirds is negative 7 thirds. But that's on the top. So I want to move those down to the bottom, giving me a to the positive 7 thirds. Another way of looking at that is, well, I got a negative here. I need to move that downstairs. So I'm moving 5 thirds downstairs where I already had 2 thirds. 5 thirds plus 2 thirds is a positive 7 thirds. Either way. 
and then B, the one half, stays downstairs. This is positive. Okay, almost done. Two more. Sometimes you may need to change the form of the expression or simplify the expression. For example, we can't multiply square root of x times the cube root of x. But if we rewrite in rational form, we can. So for example, square root is to the one half, cube root is to the one third. Now here we can do that. Keep the base and add the exponents. One half plus one third. Find the common denominator of six. That's three sixths and two sixths. Which means it's x to the five sixths. Here, we have 2 to the 3 halves on the top, and at the bottom we have 2 to the 1 third, which means we have same base, so it's 3 halves minus 1 third. Find a common denominator of 6. 3 halves is 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9. This is 2 sixths. That gives us 7 6. So our answer is 2 to the 7 6. And that's it.